It is 4 p.m. Eastern Time on this Thursday, August 16th, and we have a lot to talk about in the tropics. In fact, we think there's going to be an additional two to three named storms in the Atlantic Basin before the end of the month. So as we take a look at the latest tropical weather outlook, we see that Tropical Storm Gordon has formed to the east of Bermuda, but Gordon is likely to become a hurricane and then become extra tropical before reaching the Azores Islands. So we're not terribly concerned about that storm as it will not be making a direct hit on anyone as a tropical storm or hurricane. More importantly, we've got the remnants of Tropical Depression 7 in the form of a tropical wave beginning to move into the lower Bay of Campeche, and the Hurricane Center has raised the two-day development probability to 20%, and they even have a reconnaissance plane scheduled to fly out into this disturbance tomorrow afternoon, although I think they may at least temporarily cancel that mission until we begin to see more signs of organization over the next couple of days. Since the Hurricane Center is now paying more attention to the southwest Gulf of Mexico, they are also running their tropical model suite on the disturbance. But don't get too caught up in where the center is currently initialized, as we are still dealing with a very broad area of low pressure, and over the next few days this may jump around a little bit. This becomes more evident on the regional visible satellite. As you can see, much of the convection is still out across Central America, and this is going to be verified in a moment by the mid-level vorticity, and you can see that convection out across the Bay of Campeche is not overly strong, despite the fact that we are seeing a bit of a flare up here within the last few hours. But overall, nothing imminent is expected in terms of development, and it's going to be a few more days until we begin to pay a little bit more attention to the Gulf of Mexico, especially to the areas just east of Tampico. And right now we've got a remnant area of upper level low heights, and this upper level low is not favorable for western Gulf development, but as has been indicated by the models, it is starting to weaken and shift a little bit more toward the west. So the western Gulf should become at least marginally favorable over the next 48 to 72 hours. The latest low-level vorticity product also verifies that the bulk of mid-level energy is still centered across Mexico. And we need some more of this to inch a little bit more toward the north for us to have any legit chance of development. If this does not happen, then of course if it goes into Mexico, then the development chances are near 0%. But the models are showing at least some tendency for this to want to pull north over the next couple of days. And that's why we are paying so much attention to the western Gulf at this time. Also, the latest wind shear analysis streamlines shows the upper level ridge that was once centered over the southwest Caribbean is also pulling toward the northwest. And it should replace that upper level low that we saw on water vapor imagery. Thus, the wind shear values should continue to steadily decrease out across the western Gulf to the west of 90 degrees west longitude. Before we dive into the latest long-range model guidance, I would also like to mention that we are anticipating a substantial increase in African wave activity, and we do think that we will have at least one named storm exit near Africa within the next week or so, and the first one could be from this tropical wave that will be exiting the coastline over the next 24 hours, and several models are now becoming more aggressive with this system developing as it moves out into the central Atlantic. This is the 12Z run of the Canadian CMC model, and over the next six days we see this front diving toward the south, and it's going to help bring some of this western Gulf energy northward. Now in this particular run of the CMC, it's got the energy tied up too much along the Mexican coastline, so it doesn't have development in this particular run. But just by having a front across the northern Gulf of Mexico with some energy coming out of the Bay of Campeche, that's enough reason to at least pay attention to the western Gulf for any signs of development. And this is what I was talking about. By day six, the Canadian CMC model has not one, but potentially two systems trying to develop out across the East Atlantic. Meanwhile, the 12Z run of the GFS model is showing a little bit more concentration in the activity out across the Western Gulf, and it also keeps the area of low pressure offshore a little bit longer, almost to the point to where we see a tropical depression or a tropical storm just to the south of Brownsville, Texas. So obviously, if this area of low pressure is to stay offshore, for any added amount of time, then we could easily be dealing with a tropical depression or a storm in the western Gulf. Also notice here, the tropical wave that is currently exiting the coast of Africa is being forecast to develop into at least a tropical storm as it moves west-northwest to northwest through day seven. There is also still some question with regard to the track of anything that were to attempt to develop in the western Gulf of Mexico. As we switch over to the mid-level 500 millibar relative vorticity forecast from the GFS model, we see more troughing out across the central United States, and this trough will have the tendency to try to pull whatever that tries to develop in the western Gulf toward the north or even northeast. So all interest from the western Gulf into the central Gulf needs to continue to monitor 
the Hurricane Center outlooks for anything that may try to form down there over the next few days. And in terms of any track for that system that is exiting the coast of Africa, as of right now, the models are trying to make out a disturbance or weakness in the mid-level steering ridge out across the central Atlantic. And if this tropical wave were to strengthen as quickly as forecast, then it would have the tendency to want to pull north into that weakness of the ridge. So that would certainly be good news for the interests in the Caribbean and United States, but it's just too early to tell whether or not the models are strengthening the system too quickly and whether or not this weakness in the ridge will actually exist. We will know more on that in a few days. Finally, the last graphic we're going to show with regard to the GFS forecast is what it's showing at 300 millibars. And at this level, we can see upper level lows a little bit better. And this was the upper level low that we were talking about that is currently situated over the western gulf. But as you can see, the upper level low is forecast to weaken and also shift more toward the west. So conditions to the south of Texas should become steadily more favorable for development in the coming days. Now, whether they will still be favorable if it were to decide to move more toward the north near Texas or Louisiana is a little bit more questionable as the troughing would tend to promote more in the way of westerly winds in the mid to upper levels. But that is still something that we will have to figure out and analyze over the next couple of days as the system tries to get its act together. Also, one thing that I almost forgot to point out was the seven-day precipitation accumulation forecast from the GFS model. And thanks to this disturbance moving toward the northwest, the GFS is forecasting very high totals. So even if we don't get any development, the rain chances and the accumulations near the Texas coast are going to more than likely be quite high. And finally, this is the latest 10-day forecast from the ECMWF model, and we see that the synoptic pattern that is being advertised by the CMC and GFS does have fairly good agreement with the European. We see more amplification of the trough out across the central and eastern United States, and this exists all the way through this upcoming Sunday, where a cold front is more than likely going to become at least stationary out across the northern Gulf. Anytime you get a pattern like this in late August, it needs to be watched especially when you have a tropical wave that is going to be interacting with the front as it moves into the western gulf near Texas or northern Mexico. And the interesting thing is that this trough could lift out and it could leave all of this mischief behind and then the upper level could steadily become more favorable. And as we go into next Wednesday, the European model still has a very broad 1,010 millibar surface low lingering right around the coastline. So once again, if this were to be just a little bit more toward the east, then this would be a much more interesting weather map depiction. And if that weren't enough, the European is now showing that tropical wave near the coast of Africa developing into a hurricane as we go into days 8 through 10. But as of right now, it's seeing the same weakness that the GFS does, and it's implying more of a northwest track. So that's all for now on this Thursday afternoon. Keep it tuned to 28storms.com for more discussions. And as always, we will be putting out at least one video per day, and you can also access that at the Hurricane Tracker app.